here we are again. I think this is isolation interview number 70. When lockdown started in March, I didn't think we'd get this far. Now, my next guest is not just a highly acclaimed musician, singer and producer with a truly unique sound. And this next bit's true. She is a real life Zulu princess. Who knew? So let's royal ourselves up and give a massive out news global welcome to the ridiculously talented Toya DeLazy. Hello, Toya. Hi, Vara. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a joy. It's a joy. And thank you so much for joining us today. Now, in my introduction, I referred to your unique sound. And to be brutally honest, I find it quite hard to categorise your sound. So how would you describe it? So Afro Rave is a genre I've created myself um, and it's a mix of Zulu together with British contemporary sound, uh, which would be a bit of techno, drum and bass and global bass sounds. Right. So basically the merge came because as a global citizen, I've grown um, and as an artist, but at the same time, I want to share a piece of who I am. And I think languages really show people, you know, you get a, a slice of where the person is from and how much the culture has grown. So I found a way to connect with my new world whilst also, you know, being true to my roots and sharing something, just sharing something that's different. Now, a little bird told me about something called the Afro Rave Project. Yeah. Tell it. Tell us about it. Afro rave. So I call the sound Afro rave because it's African and it's rave. Um, and we love to rave too. So Afro rave video is, this one is a fashion film. If you've ever heard any of my stuff, the first song was Hunani and that was shot in the townships. And it's got queer culture in it because it's a way to express that, you know, we exist as queer people through our style through the sound and yeah through the way we dance so that one represents a bat and now with the afro wave kawe um, music video that is um style basically and it's stylistically shot it looks like a garden and yeah i think you guys need to just check it out before i yeah i ruin it should we have a look at it now <laughs> yeah okay. let's get it. here we go folks this is i can't say it kawe yeah. kawe there we go, from my dear friend, Toya DeLazy. Roll VT. Velling as Zenze, it's handing a dead dead, my papa's a cat, Capella wing less than get you get with check, and below eleke, Babuang and Fastes, if you get them shanne, Zibizi Pantle, Harambe, Pampe, Labantu Pampe, Mapezu Gum Kame, Balela Balale, Minang as a cate, Chu. Una cowe, Una cowe, Una cowe, Chu. Una cowe, Una cowe, Una cowe.
Oh, wow, that is brilliant. Thank you so much. We're going to be playing that on a loop in the Out News Global HQ for the next 27 years. Come by Toya de Lazy, folks. And the links are on your screen now so you can check it out for yourself. Now, it's quite an interesting project because it's not your typical music video. I know music videos often showcase fashion, but this looks kind of very, very fashiony. So it's kind of a combo, I think, between a music video and a kind of fashion showcase. Can you tell us how it came about and your involvement in it? Yes, so I've been working with Cal Lewis for a while. He understands what I'm trying to portray. And so we a team and, you know, instead of conventional music videos, it often, I don't know, it feels like it's always gone a certain way. It's always just the artist um, and showcasing themselves or, you know, with this, I wanted to showcase something a bit bigger than myself because for me, Aperave is bigger than me. It's, I'm just a part of it. And um, there, Cal decided to turn it into a fashionista garden, um, whereas, um, how can I put it, like the greens, the way the earth comes through, the different styles of dance, the clothing, kind of showing what the entire movement is about, because I see it as a movement. Yeah, I mean, the um, pitch values are, are so high, aren't they? Incredibly high. And, and that's why I, I pride myself working with Cal, because we love to also churn out the quality. Sometimes you may think, oh, it's South African, and you think it's just going to be subpar. I want to be in the global space, and this yeah. is just like, yeah, I'm putting all my energy into that. So yeah. that's how it came about, basically. And Kawe also, mostly it was about artists coming together, different creatives coming together, because we're stuck in this lockdown. And we're like, we want to do something. So a lot of creatives came together. And that's why it's called Made to Create. Um, creation is, is a vocation for us as well. You know, so it's something that needs to be shown that comes out. So that was the main uh, message coming from that. Kawa means warrior. Yeah. So be strong, warrior. Keep creating. And yeah, that's how the Garden of Afro came to be. Fantastic. Now, it's obvious to anyone who listens to your music that it's more than just a job. It's clearly a, a passion, a vocation for you. Yeah. And it, it's impossible to fake uh, yeah. that sort of thing. So let me ask you, as someone who's been in the business for quite a long time, what is it that motivates you to keep going every day you get up, you get up in the morning? That's a big question. So what motivates me to keep going? I think music for me gave me a platform to voice many things that I couldn't as a woman, um, as a black girl, also, you know, being part of royalty and, and politics. There, there's protocols and you don't find yourself being able to express a lot of things that 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 needed to come out you know I feel like I exist when I when I can express myself so it allowed me that voice and I guess what keeps me going every day is that I get messages from people that I wouldn't expect saying thank you for writing that song thank you for saying those things thank you for standing and being who you are thanks for being unique you know so I mean, those things are very encouraging. I mean, you're uh, so unique. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, you're on record of say, as saying that you moved to London because being part of the LGBTQ plus community was diff difficult for you back home. Was that because of general attitudes in South Africa or because of your position as part of a royal family? Wow, big question. So, you know what? My family actually was quite accepting because when I um, spoke to my granddad, uh, for example, and, you know, I told him, I was like, this is who I am. He actually told me that queer people existed in our culture. Mm. And, um, yeah, we were safe and protected. Um, and it dawned on me that, you know, this, the unsafe space was created by colonization yeah, and yeah. everybody being stripped of their culture and forgetting who they were and stuff like that. So... I think that permeated into society quite a bit. And it was more now being in this position, understanding that women were getting corrective raped. My family was just quite worried, you know, hoping that, you know, I, that doesn't happen, you know, but a lot of people were getting killed. And as an artist, you need to get to the point where you have to express yourself. Otherwise, if you hard hide certain 
you know, facets of your artistry, you, you're not really the artist you want to be. So yeah. for me, com coming to the UK, I saw it as a melting pot of culture. I mean, many artists that I love have made it quite successfully here. I mean, I, I think I've got a long way to go, but I mean, I think of your Jimi Hendrix, Adele's, Amy Winehouse, like yeah. people, I just wanted to know what is it about the space that allowed people to express so freely, you know, from their core. And it was really a, 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 a place where I wanted to grow and, and rediscover myself again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it looks like with the advent of various vaccines, I'm now gonna cross my fingers, that the end, <laughs> the end is in sight for this appalling, ghastly pandemic. And I oh. know that I'm not the only one that when no. 2020 disappears into the rear view mirror, I'll be <laughs> sticking my hand out of the car window if I can labour the original and giving it the finger. Okay, I'll stop with that metaphor now. I'm not sure if it works, but let's just go with it. But what are you looking forward to now in 2021 from both a personal and professional point of view? Personally, I've grown a lot. You know, there's still growth and stillness. And through the stillness, there was a lot of things I got to understand just within myself, within my community, and re-understanding re our community, where we stand, how I can as an artist, help champion and be a great ally, whether it's to the trans community and um, push that towards my, my, own, my own people, you know, and yeah. open, open people's eyes as to, you know, we are all one and um, how we can work together and, and, and stop hatred of people being themselves and making people fear who they are. Because I think fear is what stops everybody from moving forward. Yeah. If we, stayed fearful as as humans i don't think we'd be here we'd still be hiding in the jungle somewhere hoping a lion doesn't eat us you know so like that's what it's taught me it's like i just want to spread this message of do not fear who you are and professionally i can't wait to travel again yeah, you yeah. know travel um definitely hits a lot of festivals because i've just finished recording the album i was in the studio literally the whole time it was keeping me sane yeah yeah and i was finishing the rest of the the, the, the album and um hearing the mixing and masterings and and just writing out these stories so oh i can't wait to perform again be in front of people share that energy and yeah reconnect reconnect with my community and yeah hopefully see my family at some point <laughs> I'll tell you what, I haven't seen you for more than a year. I think the last time was uh, Pride in London 2019. And I seem to have having a very good time. So yeah. when all this is over, we're going to meet up face to face rather than remotely. I'll buy you a beer and you yes. teach me how to swear in Zulu. Is that a <laughs> I think that's a great idea. You need to know how to defend. <laughs> <laughs> now, words like unique iconic and inspirational are overused, so I try not to use them myself, but I think in the case of you, Toya De Lazy, they apply perfectly. So it only remains for me to say, thank you for joining us today. Good luck with the new album, and we wish you love, luck, and happiness for the future. Thank, oh, thank you, Rob. Thank you, everybody. Mwah.